give you the hot sauce. Episode 22 of Stacey King's Give Me the Hot Sauce. That unmistakable music tells you it's time to have some fun and lots of laughs coming up on the show. This is episode number 22. Think about some great number 22s in sports history. The NFL's all-time leading rusher, Emmett Smith. How about some baseball players? Clayton Kershaw, Jim Palmer. And for football, Bob Hayes, the great Dallas Bullet. Cowboys. Right? Bullet, Bob, Bullet Hayes. Bob Hayes, yeah. And from the world of basketball, Elgin Baylor, who recently passed away, and Clyde Drexler, of course, went up against Stacey's Bulls in the 1992 John NBA Sally. Finals. Ooh, That's right, Spider Sally. Sally. Yeah, so welcome into the show. We're going to have a lot of fun today. we got some special treats in store. want to thank our great sponsors at Bubble Up. Bubble Up is the cloud reimagined. It is the new way to visually organize any kind of content all in one place. And John is always displaying the great swag. And we needed that Bubble Up full of, you know, this week. We this got a show lot of was changes. moving in a lot of directions. Yeah. A lot of changes moving in there. And we had to keep track of everything that happened last week with the NBA trade deadline. And the Bulls are one of the big movers and shakers. And Stacey, Bulls are getting great reviews for the moves they made. They swung big. Forget about uh, trying to hoard draft picks and cap space. They traded in two first-round draft picks, along with Wendell Carter Jr. and Otto Porter, for Nikola Vucevic, a two-time All-Star. He is going to bring a, a whole new dimension to this team. i tell you what. Um, AK and Mark Eversley have hit home runs since they've been here. You know, they're not hitting singles. You know, no. they're not flying out to Swinging the morning for the fences. They're going for home runs. <laughs> and so another home run, you pick up an all-star. And as you know, in this league, you know, all-stars wins games. You know, everybody's mm -hmm. trying to pair up. Everybody's trying to get on teams with other great players. And, you know, great players attract other great players. And so it's an opportunity for, you know, the Bulls to be able to get a second all-star, take some pressure off of Zach. So now you got two all-stars on your roster, inside, outside duo. Um, you got an opportunity to not just for this year, but the coming years for people to say, hey, man, Chicago's doing something <laughs> special there. Their front office yeah. is, you know, is pretty good. You know, they're trying to win. They've got two all-stars. I'm looking at this situation now. Let's say like a Chris Paul using him as an example. Like, hey, man, look, oh, they got they got nice talent there. You know, mm -hmm. I can see myself going to Chicago. They need a point guard go there and play and, and come out of the Eastern conference, because as you know, the Eastern conference is top heavy right now. You know, there's like three teams, three or four teams. And then the rest is like pretty much everybody else is on that same level. You know, you've got, you know, Philadelphia, Brooklyn are the two best teams with Milwaukee probably being that third team. And then I would probably say Miami would be that yeah. fourth team. So those, those four teams are, you know, the upper echelon of the Eastern conference, everybody else is, pretty much on the same level as far as, you know, their rosters and what they're trying to do. This was the big, most active trade deadline in Ooh. 35 years. We had 46 players, 23 teams involved. And one of the reasons why teams don't normally like to make big trades at midseason is because it's hard to work in new players into your offensive and defensive systems when you have very few practices, especially now in this, this COVID affected year, and you can't really get the guys indoctrinated. And the worst thing for the Bulls is they're right in the middle of their toughest road trip of the season. So I think people that are seeing the first couple of games and wondering, hey, what's going on? It's going to take a little while to get these guys ingrained. But once they're there, I think it's going to be pretty exciting to watch. Well, it's a whole overhaul of a roster. I mean, if you think yeah. about it, I mean, you lose you lose Wendell Carter, Daniel Gafford, Otto Porter, all rotational guys. Um, and then you bring in Daniel Tice. You know, you bring in, you know, Vucevic, you bring in Troy you know, Brown, jo Troy Brown, uh, Javante Green. Green. I mean, so you got a whole new roster. And so and you, you've got a you know, there's no practice time. You know, as you said, this is more of a move. I mean, of course, the Bulls want to win now. Yeah, they, you, it's, it's evident what they did. They want to win now and get to the playoffs. But this is also a long term move. This is a, a next year move, the year after move. Um, again, you go out and get an all-star, you swing for the fences. You know, everybody values those those first round picks. You know, um, we had a, you know, we had a vault full of them. <laughs> 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 we had a vault full of them. So uh, it was great to see, you know, uh, you know, AK and Mark, you know, say, hey, look, you know, we gave, we had a fair evaluation the first 40 some games of what we had here. None of these guys, were their players. Patrick Williams is the only one that they drafted. So they there's loyalty to him because that's their draft pick. But everybody else is on a make good situation. Um, I don't even think, to be honest with you, I can't speak for them, 
But I don't know if they thought that highly of Zach Rose to begin. I mean, not Zach Rose, but uh, <laughs> I mean, Zach Levine. Zach Rose would be a pretty good player. Yeah, that, that, that's a kid <laughs> who played baseball for me. Um, so I, I don't know if they thought as highly of Zach Levine. They probably respected him as yeah. a scoring area. But I don't know if they looked at him as a long-term thing. And I think Zach had to prove that to him is with mm-hmm. his play. I mean, he made the all-star team. He shows that he is a number one guy. He's a guy that you can build around and you can see now evident. That's what they're doing. They're building around him. And, you know, a guy like Lowry who didn't sign, you know, didn't sign, they didn't get him signed. Um, he's going to be a restricted free agent. Now he's in a tough situation now because you, they've wanted you to be the number two guy, you know, Billy Donovan wanted you to be the number two guy but you never took that mantle and took that, Mm -hmm. you know, you, you were more, you know, you have up and down games. He's having a great year, but he's had some up and down games, not consistently being that number two guy that they need. So they went out and got a number two guy, really a one, a guy. Yeah. Now Billy moved Lowry to the bench because he didn't want to have Vucevic and Lowry playing together. So he tried to mix up offense and defense didn't work that well against golden state, but it's probably something he's going to stick with for a while. There were a lot of reports that AK and Mark Eversley were, were talking with the new Orleans Pelicans about a deal that could have involved Lowry Markin and going to new Orleans to bring back Lonzo ball. And, and those talks could be revisited in the summer because it's no secret. The bulls would like to upgrade at point guard, get a more traditional two-way point guard who can help you on offense and defense. Well, there, there's going to be a, a surplus of guards out on the market this summer, you know, mm-hmm. so they're going to have an opportunity. I mean, would you like to have Lonzo ball? Yes. I, mm-hmm. I think it's a no brainer. You know, he's a young kid under 25 years old. He's, he's shown the ability to lead a team. He's a pass first pass second point guard. So yeah, of course you'd want to get him to implement him with this younger team. Um, I think he'd make your team better, but there's going to be a surplus of, of point guards out there. Uh, I think the big key is, is, is not overpaying for someone, you know, getting yourself in that situation because, you know, at the end of the day, you know, that's what you're looking at. I mean, you know, you're looking at trying to be able to keep your roster, trying to keep it competitive, you know, and, you know, if you got the money to spend to go out and get a quality point guard, cause I'm a big Lonzo ball fan, big Lonzo ball fan. If they can swing that deal in the sign and trade because both him and, Lowry are restricted, restricted free agents. Yeah. So you could do a sign and trade possibly. Um, but I, I, I trust AK and Mark, you know what? They know what they're doing. So whatever they do, I'm 100% behind it. I'm just a man sitting next to the man sitting next to the man. Yeah. They're playing chess while the rest of the league is playing checkers. <laughs> exactly. We, we like to see that with the front office. Uh, there are going to be some guys available in free agency. Do you see Dennis Schroeder turn down an extension <laughs> offer from the Lakers? He'd look nice on this team, but he looks like he's looking for big dollars. Well, um, was it four years, eighty-four million? Yeah, he said no. O- on a on a I'd like to say no to that kind of <laughs> on, on, a, on a championship caliber team yeah, yeah. playing with LeBron James. Yeah. You know, maybe it's maybe he wants a bigger role. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe that's what it is. Maybe he wants to be it to be his team because the last few years. He's been coming off the bench in Oklahoma City. You know, he started in Atlanta. Off he was a starter, and he came off the bench early in Atlanta, and then yeah. he became a starter. Um, maybe he wants to be a starter. Maybe he wants to have a team. So mm-hmm. that's why he turned down. That's a lot of money. I mean, you know, I, I don't know if I'm turning down four years, <laughs> $84 million, and he's still young, too. It's not like he's, uh, you know, 30 years old. I mean, he's still a young guard. So, woo. He gets the money, and he gets to play on a championship team. Yeah, and I mean, turn that down. I mean, you're, yeah, it, some guys want to be the some, man. Though. Some guys don't think about the ring, you yeah. know, and it's a prime example. Like you see a young kid like that passing up the money to play on a championship caliber team for a bigger role. But then you see veteran players that are going to teams to try to win a championship. Now they're, they're going to pass up on the money yeah. because like, you know, you got Blake Griffin, you got, you Drummond. know, Drummond, you've got LaMarcus Aldridge, you know, those guys have given up, you know, the money per se to, I want to win a ring now. I've, I've made all the money I want and I, I'll probably end up getting it again if I decide to leave this situation. But for right now, I'm chasing rings. And so it's kind of what Brooklyn is doing. Woo, my goodness. Well, do you think maybe if, if Lonzo Ball comes to, uh, if there's a trade, you think maybe he's thinking New Orleans? You know, I mean, where, where do you think he could land, Schroeder? Oh, Schroeder, yeah. well, he's going to be an unrestricted free agent, so but, he can go wherever he wants. But where to do you think, I mean, who's going to offer him? Well, if he gets that? a ring this year with the Lakers, he's probably going to look where, where can I be featured in the offense? Where can I get more shot attempts? And that could be any team in the league. And it doesn't necessarily have to be a contending team. But what, you know, what Stacey saw more with Brooklyn loading up, you know, with Blake Griffin and LaMarcus Aldridge, and they've got, now they've got depth, they've got star power at every position. 
that's a pretty formidable matchup if it is the Nets and the Lakers in the finals. Well, I tell you what, it's very similar to the Avengers. You know, you got all the super <laughs> friends getting together, right. yeah. and LeBron is Thanos. And so, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. LeBron's got all the Infinity Stones. So, therefore, the Avengers, they're all coming together. <laughs> and they, they, they get one more, they'll definitely be the Avengers, okay? So they get one the more. Off? Huh? Who's pulling the glove off? Kevin Durant's uh, going to try. Uh, Kev, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I still, I still think, like, you know, as much talent as they have and they've assembled in Brooklyn, they still have to play together. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a guy, Kevin Durant is still out with the hamstring injury. Kyrie's been in and out of the lineup. It's really basically been James Harden, you know, and I, I got into a, I got into a little disagreement the other day with, um, you know, somebody was talking to me at the barbershop. Should he be the MVP? He should be MVP. And, and even though he's playing at an MVP level, you can't give him the MVP. No, I agree. Because of what happened in Houston and the way he left and he quit on this team. As much as I like James Harden, and he is playing at an MVP style yeah. because he's been basically been carrying Aaron Brooklyn by himself, you you can't give him the MVP. It sends the wrong message. And he had that it keto just, weekend, the full that, keto weekend where yeah. he lost sixty pounds. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yeah. City had that miracle slim yeah. fast. Yeah, yeah. All, all I know is over. whatever <laughs> plane, whatever plane that they uh, they're flying on, everybody got their superpowers back. So, hey, the Avengers, you got, you, you got Blake Griffin because y'all was over here joking about Blake, and he said next time he sees y'all, he's going to choke y'all out. Oh, did you hear what he said, said to the media? Yeah, the yeah, and it was pointing at you. No, he was trying no, to talk no. to you. I wasn't on that yeah. Zoom call. Said, yeah, so he basically said, <laughs> no, you wasn't on the Zoom call. You wasn't on the Zoom call, but he was pointing at you because I told him what you said. So he said yeah, all he, the people that said he was washed up and da 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 Yeah, yeah. And yeah. he said, now they think it's unfair because another All-Star is going to the Nets. He said, everybody thought I was no good. Yeah, everybody thought he was no good. He couldn't jump, and now he's yeah. out there dunking catching lobs <laughs> it looks like lob city in la and see all the people made fun of blake griffin okay now you got the last laugh yeah boom you know, sooner baby boom sooner hey back to the bulls for a second i loved i loved your call on uh daniel tice tice tice, tice, tice baby, baby. That, that's beautiful oh, man that, that's gonna catch daniel on big time tice, tice baby <laughs> that's, word to your mother you know in boston basically gave him up in that deal because they wanted to get under the luxury tax. There's always a business component to it. Heck, he was starting for the Boston Celtics, him coming off the bench. I'm not sure about him playing together with Vucevic. I know they tried that yesterday. I, I don't know if that's going to work, but he is he is exactly what you want in terms of a tough guy, not going to take any nonsense, is going to restore some order in that paint. Well, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to be honest with you. I mean, everyone they brought here is a tough guy. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, we have upgraded toughness big time. I mean, you yeah. don't see but guys go down. Huh? Well, he couldn't go the other way. Oh, uh, I don't know, man. Marshmallow lineup. I don't know. All I know is, is that <laughs> you got guys now that are. That was uh, Timmy Whispers, by yeah, the way. Timmy Whispers <laughs> just jump back in. Send all your over. cards and letters. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This guy, this guy here, ladies and gentlemen, he says only two words the whole show. <laughs> just lobs yeah. a hand grenade yeah. in there and he walks yeah. away. Yeah, he throws a bomb in the middle of the table. Everybody's like, Doc! Yeah, I, I never fart in the wind. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> okay, all right. we just lost another sponsor. Yeah. Anyway, um, Tice is a tough guy. Yeah. Defensively, you can yeah. tell that he he's very he's a pro. You know, both yeah. Vucevic, him as a pro. I mean, they they the way they handle themselves. You see where they warm up. Um, just professional guys, you know. And he made an impact in the game as soon as he came in the game did. last night. You know, a block shot, an assist here and there, um, a shot. I mean, he can shoot the three. You know, he's physical. Um, you know, and, and it's it's really sad because, like, you know, we give up a lot of young talent. You know, Wendell Carter Jr., I think, still has an opportunity to be a pretty good player in this league. He's just got to get confidence. You know, they were here, you know, four years, and it just didn't work out. You know, for whatever reason, it didn't work out. Sometimes it's it's a person needs a, uh, you know, change of scenery. You know, he's on a young team in Orlando. Yeah, how about Daniel Gafford? He had two big games, and unfortunately, you rolled his ankle. Do you see the, the Wizards already stolen your Mr. Mean nickname? <sighs> Everybody's stealing your stuff. You know what? Stuff. You know what? Listen, I, when I started, when I started this, when I started being an analyst, you know, this is my 16th year. I remember coming on. People told me that I couldn't have this personality. Yeah. You can't do this. You got to be straight laced. Got to be professional. Now, and I, I'm like, I'm gonna be myself. You know, that's you know, and I, I, I owe a lot to Jerry Reinsdorf because he, you know, basically told me do you know call the game the way you see it, be yourself. And so, the Bulls have allowed me to be who I am. And now you look at everybody, they're like kind of biting my style. Like, <laughs> you know, I'm like the originator of have some right. of these guys, the way they call games. You know, you listen to the guys in uh, Charlotte, 
you know, how they call games. You know, they weren't calling games like that a couple of years ago. You know, so um, I feel I think it's pretty cool. You know, it's it's what I get upset is when the national guys use my stuff yeah. and then pass it off as theirs. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That 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 kind of irks me a little bit. Instead of like, I will say like, you know, Jeff Van Gundy said something one time um, and he gave me credit. He's one of the first people that ever gave me credit on national TV. Stacey King said, you know, and I was like, okay, cool. But there's some people that just be hijacking, plagiarizing. Well, yeah. Isn't that the ultimate form of uh, flattery? Yeah. It is. It is. Unless you try it to make it. Unless you try to make it as yours. Yeah. You try to make it like it's yours. You said it. Yeah. And see, a lot of times, you know, guys think because they're on national television that they don't see me down here. Yeah. You know, like I said, I'm I'm your I'm your favorite, you know, podcaster's podcaster. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm your favorite analyst, analyst. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, I, I people hear our games now. Games are played all over the place now with satellites. So every game is seen. Twitter, Twitter, everybody, I mean, streamed. I mean, so everybody gets to see your game. So it's funny on Twitter. Sometimes people will tweet me and go, Stacey, they're stealing your lines. You know, yeah. that's uh. Stacey King's line on Instagram. <laughs> Stacey King said that first, you know? Uh, so, awesome. so the, the Tice Tice thing yesterday, it was like, you know, everything's instinctive. You know, people think I sit at home in a mirror and, and I'm singing and I'm doing all these, these catchphrases. And it's not like that at yeah. all. Everything is, I'm just quick witted. And it just flows, man. It's like when you played the dozens when you were a kid. If you guys don't know what the dozens is, that's a oh yeah, that's, yeah. Oh, yeah. So we that's when you talk about, about that. yeah, that's yeah. when you talk about somebody. You can't talk about anybody's mother. mother. <laughs> right. That's off limits. But you can talk about a person's clothes, shoes. BJ told you how good I was at doing that. So <laughs> <laughs> that was an episode. That was two episodes ago. Yeah, yeah. Episode yeah, but, twenty. Yeah, episode yeah. twenty. But we talked about that way back in the yeah. beginning. Yeah. Yeah. You know. In the basement, we talked about. In the uh, basement. No, I wasn't in your basement. Not my basement. No, I wasn't in your basement. Yeah. Oh, you're talking about, oh, okay. With his tub and his oil. Yeah, tub tub and oil. oil. Yeah, (laughs) yeah, truffle oil. Yeah, okay. You you talked about the huntsman in in the club. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Hey, listen, that's a nice, that that, That was the scarred episode. That scarred me. Okay. Okay, Don't bring that up again. And the folks in in Boston came up with a pretty good one, though. Uh, They're having to use Luke Cornett because they've had some injuries and stuff. And he actually had a couple of good games for them. They're, They're calling him the Green Cornet. Uh, that's not oh, too bad. No, that's great. Uh, was just, that Scalabrini? Did was that his call, or was it just a? Yeah, I don't know exactly where yeah. that came from, but it's yeah. I mean, it, it, may, it may be the, uh, the NBC no. New England website. Was, I'm going to hold never, off on my. Uh, analysis. It would never come out. Oh, are you going to save your Celtic pride comment? Yeah, I know you're and Rajon Rondo working with the oh, young guys. Yeah, hey, yeah. So is that coming up later. <laughs> I had a lot of Rondo last night with the Clippers. I had some great cutaways. He didn't play though. I know, but I had some great cutaways of Rondo. Yeah, in case oh, you don't know, yeah. John's directing the Milwaukee Bucks broadcast, and they got faced by the Clippers last night. What's wrong Oof. with the Bucks? Well, I, you know what? It's a good question. I just think uh, go out west, and it's a whole different ball game. I'm telling you, I watched the Clippers last night, and they didn't have Paul George. Kawhi was 0 for 6 from threes, and they still beat Giannis at 32, and they still beat him by 20, 24 points. And, you know, you just get guys in the right environment. Reggie Jackson, Kennard, this kid Terrence Mann. I mean, I can see why they got rid of Lou Williams. But, and, and Bud sits man. four starters against the Knicks last week. I, What's that all yeah, about? Yeah, and that was a game before. I, You know, you kind of put me on the spot here. I, yeah. Yeah. You got yeah. to yeah. defend yeah. your, your yeah. team. Well, yeah. I mean, <laughs> hey, we're winning. Uh, the, come on now. Oh. 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 The, the Bulls are 0-2. Oh. That's, that's right. the trade. So wow! So I, I first think of all, wait a minute. Hold it's, on. A, it's a marathon, stinger, not a sprint. Stinger, stinger. First marathon. of all, I didn't say anything. Okay, <laughs> it was Mark Sinowski that said it. But you're gonna drag you, me into you, it. Oh, the Bulls are there. Well, I just, I just say it. I mean, come on, Mark. You can't win every game on the schedule, and uh, especially in the playoffs. <laughs> I, yeah. Oh, I, uh, another hand grenade. Oh, oh, yeah. Lob that thing in there. <laughs> yeah. Hey, hey, Bud's won a lot of games. He's won a lot of games for the Bucks. I think you just gotta trust. A little bit of a transition right now. I mean, but oh, uh, man, I, I, playing out west is just come on, guys. You look at the standings. Hey, I mean, there would be. Hey, speaking about west, uh, the Lakers are going to start Andre Drummond in his debut tomorrow against the Milwaukee Bucks in a nationally televised game. And you guys all know my thoughts on Andre Drummond. Oh, <laughs> but yeah. but he, is, he is better than a hundred-year-old Marcus All. I will say that. Oh. Yeah, I mean, you know what? He, he's he's leading rebounder the last few years. He's going to give you uh, second chance opportunities. My biggest thing with Andre Drummond is is that you know what Andre Drummond is going to show up. Right. You know, are you are you trying to win a ring to help a team win a ring and be the difference? Of course he is to be the difference maker. Yeah, well, course. no, it's easy to say that when you you want to go there. You know, you it's easy to say I want to be part of a winning champ, but when you get there and you're not the focal point. 
And he's a free agent whole, at the yeah. end of the year, too. And your whole mindset is yeah. different. If you really are going there to win a championship, your ego's to the door, whatever you need me to do. You want me to board? I'm going to board. You want me to play defense? And I'm telling you right now, my biggest concern with them is, you know, last year they had JaVale McGee and they had Dwight Howard. Those guys in limited roles played exceptionally well in limited roles, yes, okay? Yeah. They rebounded, they played defense, they blocked shots. Yeah. Is Drummond going to do that? Is he going to come out and play hard every single yes. night? Not just being out there, you know, not empty stats. If he drops a couple stats. of passes, though, LeBron will tell him, go sit down next to the coach. That, that could be a problem. <laughs> yeah. That could be. I don't question it. And hands. you know they're going to finish games with Anthony Davis playing center anyway. Yeah, I mean, but, you know, you definitely need him because he, he's he's much younger than Gasol. Mm -hmm. He's he's one of the best rebounders in the game. You know, Mark always says his empty stats. <laughs> He's empty <laughs> stats. And uh, by the way, he's looking for you too. There's a lot of people <laughs> looking for Mark Janowski. That's why we locked the door. That's why we locked the door. Hey, Mar hey Mark Janowski came here with a Groucho Marx mask on today. <laughs> There's a lot of people looking for him. But if he comes in and, and with his mind right and he comes in there and he plays hard every night, he can help them win a championship because he could be the difference of because they got to get out the West. Forget Brooklyn. I, I, you, you can't keep thinking about Brooklyn if you're Los Angeles Lakers. I heard Jeannie Buss say something today about, yeah, everybody's gearing towards Yeah, that. bring them on. Okay, no bring way. them on. Yeah. You, you might want to worry about what's in your backyard first, okay? Because you got Denver <laughs> who is playing at a high level. You got Utah that is playing at a high level, and you got the Clippers that want you too. Yeah, so Denver picked up Aaron Gordon. Phoenix, nice move. Phoenix, yeah. is, Phoenix is there too. OK, so yeah. it's not going to be a cakewalk coming out the Western Conference. OK, whereas Brooklyn, per se, um, will have an easier time coming out the Eastern Conference, at least to get to the Eastern Conference finals. The first two rounds, I feel like will be a cakewalk for them because they're going to they're going to face an uh, eighth seed and then they're going to face another, you know, a higher uh, a six seed or something. And then they'll have to play Philly in the in the uh, in the Eastern Conference finals. You know, somebody's going to play Miami and somebody's going to have to play Milwaukee. Yeah, and neither one of those teams match up with Brooklyn. Neither one of those teams. Well, not when all, not when you have. So Brooklyn doesn't care. Brooklyn yeah. likes to send them, send yeah. them. We don't care. Our biggest, their biggest match is going to be Philadelphia. That's just, oh, that's yeah. going to be the sure. Eastern Conference final, unless unless Philly implodes because you know Embiid's been out for a while. If they just implode, I, I just don't see it happening because I think Doc Rivers has them playing, uh, you know, with a certain confidence, a certain swagger. Oh yeah, you know, they're playing defense, and they're playing they, D. Yeah, they're they playing play D. D. And you got Dwight Howard that you mentioned; he plays a perfect role there. You know, yeah. I mean, you know, he's been filling in nicely from B, but he plays that role that you know, kind of intimidator. You know, gets in people's faces, gets in their heads. I mean, they're, they're he's legit. really not scaring anybody. <laughs> well, I, they're they're pretty legit. I I think they yeah, we'd be the one team anybody. that can stop the Nets. We'll see. Well, yeah, so. that's the one team. That's the one team that I think can. But they they got too much firepower, man. I was looking at their roster today. I mean, you, who are the Nets? Yeah, they got yeah. too much firepower. I mean, Joe Harris is the best three point shooter in the game right now, yeah. and he's going to get wide open looks every single every night. night. Okay, it, it's not even going to be funny. Then I think they got Tyler Johnson. They've got some other Bruce guys, Brown. Like Bruce Brown. I mean, they got some. They got a really nice supporting cast. Because you remember early in the year, that was a big thing. Like they didn't have any depth. Yep. To get rid of all the depth to get these guys. Now, give Sean Mark some credit. He has positioned them to, you know, making moves, getting guys in there. And, you know, and I think the connection that, like, you know, Kevin Durant has with LaMarcus Aldridge being University of Texas, I think that helped him come there. I think the relationship with Blake Griffin through college and, and through the pros helped get Blake there, you know, because Blake, Blake, you know, there was rumor Blake wanted to go back out to L.A., you know, because he still got a house yeah. out there. He wanted to go back out to California. So to get him to stay in Brooklyn for a year, that was impressive. Well, Stinger's going to save his Celtic bride for later in the show. Oh, yeah. So is uh, that okay if we move that around? Yeah, yeah. we're gonna we're gonna take a quick uh, little musical break here and come back with more of episode twenty two of Give Me the Hot Sauce. <laughs> That's what the fans 
guy you recognize that smile, one of the most popular players during the early years of the Tom Thibodeau era. Brian Scalabrini, our special guest on Give Me the Hot Sauce. Brian, what was it like to hear that Stacey King call? Bring back some good memories. Loved it. I owe him a lot, man. Like the White Mamba, it does not blow up. We don't have t shirts outside the UC if it's not for Stacey King. So uh, I, I, I think it's a good nickname. Stacey King turned it into a phenomenal nickname. <laughs> Well, I appreciate this, Cal. You, you know, you deserve that nickname. You know, you got to earn a nickname if I give you a nickname, so you earned it. So, so our big question to you is, because you cover the Celtics, and you know Daniel Tice. 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 Tice, Tice baby. Okay. Oh, there you go. Okay. Vanilla <laughs> Tice. Your mother. <laughs> what, what time, when we saw him last night and we were highly impressed with him, he plays hard. I liked him when he was with Boston. I thought he was an anchor of the defense back there. He does a good job of, of rotating over blocking shots. Um, and last night he got his first action with the bulls up at golden state. And I thought he made an in, uh, immediate impact when he came in the game. So let bulls fans know uh, what kind of player we're getting. Yeah. So versatile defender, great, great communicator. You nailed that right off the jump. Um, could shoot the three, you know, very good in catch and shoot situations. Got good hands going to the basket, uh, decent at the rim. I think, and this is really important nowadays. Like he's not, he's not gonna lock Embiid up. That's that's not what he is. Like he'll be just like everybody else. But Embiid gives work to, you know, like Rudy Gobert, right? But when it comes to a solid defender, I mean, sevens or eights across the board, and sometimes it's all you need. Just having guys that have versatility and the fact that he could shoot it. And one thing you'll notice, he has underrated hands. Like he's so good at catching and finishing quickly. So you guys got a good one. Like he's got guys like Zach Levine are going to love playing with him. I don't know how long Zach Levine's going to be out, but like your guards are going to love playing with Daniel Tice. He's, he learned from Aaron Baines and, and Al Horford, two big time pros to establish NBA guys. And now like he, because he was under their wing to start, he is an elite guy in this league for, you know, his position. Scal, why were the Celtics willing to give him up? I know that they talked about the uh, salary cap and they want to make sure they got under the luxury tax with the moves that they made in that trade. But when you look at what's happened over the last five or six years with Danny Ainge, at once you had that treasure trove of draft picks and never really turned him into that big star that could get you over the top. Is, is there is there any degree of, of fan impatience or unhappiness with what Danny's been able to do over the last few years? Yeah, I mean, no question about it. I mean, they hit, well, let, let's first, um, it was all about getting under the tax. It wasn't necessarily right. like he, he didn't like Daniel Tice or he didn't think he fit in or he was trying to carve out more space for Robert Williams. You know, like you don't, I think the Celtics are their group. They feel like they'll pay the tax if we have a championship level team. And this year we just did not, don't have one. I mean, whether the expectations are, we're not a championship level team. And it's hard to make moves in the off season when you're in the tax. So the move was for tax purposes. And I mean, so far, um, like Luke Cornett and, and, and uh, Mo Wagner have been solid for, for the Celtics at this point. But um, going to what you said about the trove of draft picks. Yeah, I mean, I think the expectations were high. You had the Sacramento pick. Yeah. That was supposed to be a great pick. For whatever reason, that year, they were good. They were right around 14. Then you have Memphis. And Memphis is doing whatever they can the year before to get rid of that pick. Like It was protected to eight, but they wanted to like move on from it and have control of their own pick. Well, the lottery balls bounce around. They're the number two pick in the draft. John Morant goes there, and, Me and Memphis is halfway decent. So, I mean, that's not Danny's. That's not Danny's fault. It's just like expectations were. You just wait till this Memphis pick. You wait till the Sacramento pick comes. And each one of those those teams had great, uh, great years for whatever circumstances. De'Aaron Fox, uh, uh, John Morant coming to their own. So, yeah, I'm sure they thought that they were going to come out of this with one or two more guys. But that's just how it goes. And it, it didn't work out that way. I think it kind of all went sideways when they made the Kyrie Irving trade and they thought Kyrie Irving was going to be that guy. He, he ended up not. And now the Celtics are kind of pivoting from there. Looking at you guys right now, you guys have gone through just what pretty much every team's gone through. You have guys in and out of the lineup, injuries. Um, is there a sense of panic? Because I know right now, you know, you guys are, are down towards the bottom. And is, is there a sense of, of concern or panic uh, that you guys are are not going to be in the top 10 to, uh, you know, to get into the playoffs? 
No, I don't think they're not going to make the play-in game. I mean, that's like – I think if it was eight teams, I think it would be a little bit sense of urgency. But I think they're going to make that. And they'll, they'll remember, they've had the hardest schedule up until this point. They played the most amount of road games up until this point. So there is there is some hope that you could be trending in the right direction. The only, the only thing is they're just not playing great basketball. Historically speaking, Brad uh, Stevens' teams have been good at defending the three. They're just their 18th this year, defending the three. Historically speaking, they've been a really good fourth quarter team executing, getting stops. They're not. They're in the bottom half of the NBA. I mean, dang near uh, 25 or below in the fourth quarter defense. So, I mean, those things concern me, but it's just the fact that, you know, it's COVID, all this other stuff. You know, I think it's not concerning that they're not going to make the playoffs. It's just one of those things where reality strikes that you're probably not going to make a deep playoff run. How healthy is Kimba Walker? You know, because I, 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 it doesn't seem like he's 100%. And he really makes you guys go when he's healthy. Has that been one of the big reasons having him in and out of the lineup? Yeah, so he's he's healthy, but they're not going to play him on back-to-backs. So we're much better when we have Kimba Walker when he – and, you know, it's it's difficult. You know, like you see how many more back-to-backs there are this year compared to past because they're, they're really squeezing those games in. And there is no rhythm. Like this team is not going to play – you know, five or seven games in a row. Even even last night, they played New Orleans. And by the way, Zion is a freak show, but <laughs> this is a whole nother, that's a whole nother topic. But, um, you know, Jalen Brown, we, we, you make the trade for Evan Fournier. He gets the false positive COVID test. Now he's cleared to go and Jalen Brown hurts his hip. So the Celtics just hasn't, haven't been whole. Now I'm not, I, I think as a, as an NBA player and throughout the NBA regular season, you should take pride in winning games with guys out. I think it's like the bench to step up and be like, this is why I'm here. A lot of people in, in, in the NBA believe like, oh man, I should be playing more when everyone's healthy. No, you should be delivering when guys are hurt. That is the key to being a good bench. And, and, and they just don't like for whatever reason, when guys are missing a couple guys out, Celtics don't get it done. So, um, I mean, I think Kemba's, to answer your question about Kimba, he's healthy. He's just not playing back to back. So, you know, and I think that's the reason why he's healthy. John, you need to drop your Celtic yeah, pride. You know what? I, I just want to stop. You know, I watched two Celtics games against the Bucks, and I brought my Larry Bird sign. I know you got the banner behind you. And I want to say that Celtics pride is back. I watched them against the Bucs. Oh, my God. You're talking about the movie Celtic Pride? No, I'm talking about what I saw <laughs> against Lord. the Bucs. Oh and Scal God. saw it, too. They were down 25 one night. They came back. The next night, they looked really good. They hit 22 threes. They're going to be a six seed. Celtics Pride's not going anywhere. I got the cigar right here. I'm going <laughs> to – Scal knows it, too. All these guys are haters here, man. So Celtic Pride, baby, is back. And Larry's wow. – look, Larry's proud of that, too. Sign. <laughs> hey, man. Larry Bird ain't walking through that door. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> true. Yeah, Larry Bird ain't walking through that yeah, door. Jalen Brown, Kale. yeah, uh, Tatum and Brown and, and Kemba Walker. Are gonna nah. be, oh, man. you guys what? will notice this, right? And you and in Chicago, it's, it's a lot of teams. There's what are you capable of, and how are you consistent? And Stacy has seen the most consistent of all time. And then you're saying like what you're capable of. We've seen a lot of players and what they're capable of. And you're you're bringing up the Milwaukee Buck game. And that's what Celtics, what they're capable of. But consistency is really the name of the game, and they just haven't been consistent all year. Shut down. I, I did, but he's got the championship man in the background. <laughs> we're gonna ask him about Let's get the paddles. Get the paddles, revive him, please. No, that's let's, zoom. I'm, that's called zoom flexing. You don't zoom flex. That's zoom flexing. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you TikTok flex recently. I saw that video of the kid. Man, dude. Well, <laughs> Scal, check out the background behind uh, Stinger over there. We got Stacy's logo behind there with all the sayings. I mean, that this is big time stuff now. I, I do love. Give me the hot sauce. I, I'll never. <laughs> I'll never ever, ever, ever forget when we were in our heyday and Kyle Corver was going off. Some, <laughs> some, some attractive woman was up in the stand with a big jar of face yeah, off off and, and she was, she was putting it all over. I was like, <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen anything like this before. <laughs> Give me the hot sauce. And I was just like, oh, I can't believe what I'm God. seeing right now. <laughs> oh my God. Hey, Stacey's got his own label of hot sauce. We'll send some out to you. 
Oh, perfect. Listen, I love yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't listen to them, man. No, <laughs> no you do. Listen, man. Yeah. It's coming. Don't listen to these guys, man. Yeah. Always- hey, man, I got I got vodka. I got spaghetti <laughs> sauce. I mean, I'm not I'm not pretending. I'm this is for real. Out here, I I I am in the food industry. There's scows everywhere. So I would I 100 percent believe you have hot sauce. Especially <laughs> the north end of Boston, I bet. You're big in the north end. Yeah, I mean, I'm New England. I'm I'm much bigger than just the city. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> hey, I'm yeah, a, I'm you're, you're just getting there. shot down all over the place, yeah. John. Uh, <laughs> big, big leaguers. Yeah, tell tell the listeners because you know what you know. We always tell people like you know when they look at NBA players, they see star players. You know, they see the Kevin Durant, the LeBron James, and you know guys who are on the bench who are role players who play a role in helping the team win. You know, they always think that you know we can't play like. You know, they don't they forget you are a stud at USC. You you know, they, they they judge a lot of you on what you do in the NBA. They don't know that you were the man at USC. You were on a good team, you were a good player in USC, you're a top player, and then you get to the league and they say, Well, you know, white mom ain't nothing. I can bust sure. the ass, you know. And then <laughs> then you then you have to let them know what time it is. So 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 we just saw this episode where you took the kids <laughs> took the kids shoes, and that was hilarious, dude. So tell right, us so what you do. The, the difference. So I was just coming back, man. Like I play all the time now. I play uh, way too much. Let me just say that I play way too much. So I'm just coming off of like a like a back thing because when you get older, you play a lot. You play against young guys. Like you're gonna get hurt. It's just part of the deal, right? And you just hope it's not catastrophic that where you have to go take up golf, right? And I'm still hanging on to basketball. <laughs> Anyways, so so the kid came over and I and I've been using this line for a while now. Like, let's bet five grand. Let's put in there. I know kids, they love their iPhones, right? So I'm like, well, put up the phone then. Let's go. If we're gonna play me, we're gonna play for something. I'm just not going over there for charity. That's not how this thing works. <laughs> and the difference. Between him and most other kids, like most other kids will back out of it. He was like, let's go then. I got you, White Mamba. So I was like, damn it. I was totally thinking I was going to have to play. (laughs) And then I went over there and the level of disrespect that I was getting from this kid, then like those, like what what Stacy's talking about is those juices, right? The competitive juices that when, like to play in the NBA, you've got to be a little bit tapped. Like you do, you just have to be able to go places where you're going against better players than you and you have to level up to get a stop because like, this is your livelihood on the line. Like these kids don't ever play with their livelihoods on the line. So anyways, he started talking. Then I just had to level up. And normally I'm like helping kids out. Listen, when you go right, step into my body before you go step back, your space is good for you. But this kid, it was like, I'm going to destroy this guy right, right from the start. I'm not giving him a, a freaking inch when I'm out there. So I beat him 11-0. I embarrassed him, but I did not take his shoes and I did not take his phone. But I, I could tell right away, as soon as I went right and hit him and spun, he knew right then, like, like winning was not an option for him. It was, how many, how many points can I score? Like, can I just score one? Can I just score two? I can see it all in his face, but... Yeah, and I, I had no idea that thing was going to blow up. That had nothing to do with me. That was all those kids. And when it did, I just thought, I mean, I, I guess it was a great story, a great reminder of the difference between, I haven't been in the league in 10 years. This guy's playing basketball every day. There are levels to this game. Yeah, there is. It was awesome, though, because he, he was kind of disrespectful. Yeah, you know, for sure. And and you've kind of put him in his place. I, I saw the one episode where you did something with the radio station. Yeah. When you had, like, it was play scout one-on-one. And you like shut everybody down. I don't think anybody scored. You played like like ten people. I don't think anybody scored. Yeah, I played five games and I and one, one guy one guy scored. That was it. But and that was and that was. But I couldn't play five games now. Like I was when I got through that game, I was like, oh man, I'm tired. But yeah. But listen, Stacy, when I was in college, I went to Santa Barbara Michael Jordan camp, and the, the dudes were talking shit to Michael Jordan, like. Like being delusional in basketball is part of the deal. Like I can go to any rec league right now and see five guys who are delusional out there. And to be honest with you, when I was in the NBA, I was one of them. I remember when I was with the Bulls, Kevin Durant, somehow I matched up on him. He came down, he yacked me with a crossover into a floater. And I was like dumbfounded. How the hell does this guy just score on me? I was like, what? Why was he score on me? I had perfect defensive position. I'm like dumbass, it's Kevin Durant. That's how he just scored on you. <laughs> but you know you got to play those games in your head. Yeah, Stacey. you do. You know you it. Do. You do. You got to. You got to go to a different level. 
Yeah. Hey, Scott, what's going on with, with the big three? Are they coming back this year? I know you were they a captain are. for the first couple of years, and that a lot of people really enjoyed that. What was your experience like uh, being a captain and competing in the big three? I like it, but like one on one against real good players is really not my game. So, like, I, I mastered playing. If the game of basketball was played like eight on eight, I think I'd still be able to play in the NBA. But three on three, I get I get stuck <laughs> on an island guarding dudes like Greg Oden, where he doesn't have to move. I got like no options here. If I guarded Greg Oden in a game, I just run around and set screens and tire his ass out, and maybe I get an open shot. In three on three, when he doesn't have to clear, man, I am in trouble. But I do love competition it's the it's the thing i miss the most uh, i know i don't miss the lifestyle or any of that stuff i miss competition i love competition and, and there's no better competition than playing like really good players and my rec league here in boston i don't live in chicago i know how pickup in chicago is if i live in chicago I, I wouldn't feel that need but i live in boston the pickup's not legendary out here so it's my closest thing to you know the nba competition i get and i enjoy doing it Tell us a little bit about your time playing here in Chicago and, and, and how magical that time was. I mean, you guys were a fun team to watch. You guys were so close, man. We, we talk about it so much. Um, playing with Tibbs, playing with D. Rose and all that. Tell, tell the listeners about that experience. You know, I loved it. And i tell you why. Because I knew it was like coming to an end. And I wasn't one of these guys that was like trying to hang on. If I hung on, I hung on. If I didn't, I didn't, you know, like I was, I was at peace with it. Right. So I was just going to bust my ass every day and see what happens. Right. But I love the people, the Chicago fans, you can tell they're super passionate. The team was great. There's all kinds of different personalities from like the hippies, like Joe Kim Noah to Derek Rose, like <laughs> the most, like the most street credibility guy at the time. You had international like Lou Aldang. You had Carlos Boozer. He was from Alaska. You had Kyle Korver. Looked like Justin Bieber. You know, you had all the uh, <laughs> like the uh, like the losers living in their basement rooting for me. You know, like it just had like a big group of guys like that from all walks of life who we all really got along. And I can't have to mention, you know, Kurt Thomas and Keith Bogans. Those dudes oh, just yeah. cracking up. This like destroying people. You know, by the way. You know, like these guys don't make fun of each other anymore. That's like not a thing anymore. No. Like that's all we did was crack on that's each all other. We did. That's, that's all crazy. We did. I couldn't even imagine going and, and and like not and just making fun of somebody for these. You know that the new players they don't really do that stuff anymore. I, I find no. that I don't know what I would do. I think I would have an anxiety attack if I went in and no one made fun of each other. That's like crazy. That, isn't it? It, it's so crazy. I don't. I've been making fun of myself or my teammates since I was like 12 years old. And so that's what we all we did was bust on each other for every, every moment we would bust on each other. And, you know, like, and, and, and that's like the best when you could do that and go to war and no one's too sensitive, but you know, I love, uh, I, you know, I've always like, I thought this is the craziest thing during when I was in Chicago, I thought that Derek Rose, you know, I played with Garnett Pierce Allen. I played with Jason Kidd, Right. I thought Derek Rose was going to be better than all of them. Like I just, watched him every day and I he did things that just flat out amazed me and I, I just I don't know I mean obviously the injuries and everything like that but I, I never have been around a player like that 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 year where and I was like Jason Jason Kidd finished second in MVP voting behind Tim Duncan and and I just like what I saw from Derek I was like like blown away almost every single night watching him play. Yeah, we're so glad to see him back playing in a meaningful way again. He's coming off the bench, but he's playing some really good minutes, really productive minutes, and he's back with uh, Tom Thibodeau again. Hey, you know, one of the guys on that team, uh, C.J. Watson's writing children's books now. Did you, did you that know right? He, did you know he had that in him when you were a teammate? No, all he was doing is trying to sell T-shirts, man. Like I was, I was, I was like, "Are you even watching the scouting report?" Like, "Yo, White Mamba, we're gonna throw this, this your, your picture on a T-shirt." All he wanted to do was sell T-shirts, like, like, and that's like, that's that's a cool part about the NBA, like the different different person. I had, but I had no idea he was writing yeah. children. He plays in the big three, by the way, and the same guy, like he's the same guy. He he. He barely talked to me then unless he was trying to make money off my t-shirts, right? <laughs> and he barely talked to me at the big three. It was crazy. But we talk about dude. nicknames. He's a quiet storm. Yeah, the quiet storm. That's, that's good. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> You know, Scal, you coming you, to America reference. I yeah, like it. I yes, like yes. It. A lot of people don't get that. <laughs> 
Yeah, you had a similar experience in your broadcasting career as Stacy did. He was brought on to the uh, the Bulls television team as as a third guy at first, and then he took over for the legend Johnny Red Kerr. And now you've stepped in for the great Tommy Heinsohn. What's that? What's that been like for you? I don't try to fill shoes. I tell you that it's like impossible to do that. I just try to be myself, and you know, and I try to learn. Don't get me wrong. I'm trying to learn from guys like Tommy. You know, all those years of of, of being. Of sitting by beside him or talking to him in the media room and I miss him and this year has been super weird and like even like we just had fans for the first time the other day but I miss Tommy and uh but once again I'm not I'm never I can't feel his shoes like he's been here since 1957 uh, he's been a staple to this organization he's been a part of every championship I mean it, it's just one of those things where I just try to do the best job I can. I understand that people are going to miss Tommy Heinsohn. It's just the way it goes. But um, I, I have to just do the best job that I can. When you look at the Eastern Conference and you see what Brooklyn has done with their team, we, you know, we kind of liken it to the Avengers. And, you know, <laughs> LeBron, yeah, and LeBron is Thanos with the Infinity <laughs> Stones. So, you know, what, what's your interpretation? Do you think they have enough – not just to get out the Eastern Conference. I still think Philadelphia is, is going to be tough to beat as well. But do you think they have a what it takes to win it all? So I think it's all like it, it comes down to this, Stacey. Is Kevin Durant going to play? And that's like I don't know if he's going to play or not. And you, and you know, like the playoffs, it's grueling, man. Like it is a grind. And you're not going to get through. I can tell you, I can guarantee you this. No NBA player is getting through the playoffs unscathed, like without having a tight hamstring or a tight back or a tight calf or whatever. So if you're Kevin Durant, you had a tight calf. And last time you had a tight calf, you went out and played, you popped your Achilles. Now you have a tight hamstring and now you're going to go out there and you're going to play and you're going to be okay with it. I mean, he's been out for almost six weeks now. So I'm not sure like how healthy he's going to be. I think he'll come back. I just don't like, how is he going to navigate all this? And is he going to push himself through it? Because it really is when you get down to the playoffs, like a battle of attrition and the ones that can sustain it are the ones that have the best chance of winning. So if, but if he is healthy and they have this team, like I don't, by the way, I'm not one of these guys that think that Blake Griffin and LaMarcus Aldridge are the answer. And I know like the internet like loves these guys, but they're not that good. I, they're just, when you watch them play, you can, you can <laughs> exploit them defensively. They're just not that good. Here's the thing. Like, I'll give you an example. Like if Rashawn Holmes, right, of Sacramento, if he got bought out and he joined the Nets, right, the, like the, let's call it the general fans would not be going nuts. They won't be calling them the Avengers or anything like that. But he's much better than both those guys for that team. So I don't know if they need a LaMarcus Aldridge who can't play defense. I don't know if they need a Blake Griffin who can't protect the rim anymore, but they went and got those guys. And I think they're getting them for like an insurance for Kevin Durant. But if you have James Harden, Kevin Durant, Kyrie Irving playing at this level, then I, I think those guys are like, to me, they're just like two other guys. It could be anybody. I can give you, I could probably name a hundred guys that could fill in that role and be effective for the Nets. If you have uh, Kevin Durant, James Harden and Kyrie Irving. See what I told you, Stacey? You're going to get him a, a Blake Griffin after Scal? <laughs> listen, he man, was giving me a hard listen, time because I told him Blake Griffin uh, wasn't the same player. Anymore. No, you didn't say it like that. So you're being nice now. You basically said that Blake Griffin couldn't jump over a dollar bill. That's what no, he said. I never said that. And then, and so I called, I, so Blake, so Blake threatened him. Said he's he's calling him. on that Oklahoma fraternity. He's going to get you know? him when he sees him. So I said, <laughs> I, so I, I talked to Blake. I said, Blake, there's no need for violence. I'll, I'll talk to him. He didn't mean it. You know what I'm saying? So I, I got him off his back. Well, he's going to be more athletic than what we saw in Detroit because he was playing 35 minutes a night. But, I mean, like, Stacy, he's going to play, what, 12 to 18 in a play? If Kevin Durant is there, he's going to play 12 to 18 minutes. Like, how much I, – listen, I don't, I'm not – I think Blake Griffin's a, like a basketball genius. Don't get me wrong, but athletically, he's just not there anymore. And uh, LaMarcus Aldridge, he can't even bend his knees anymore. So I don't know how he's going to guard guys. Like they, Tiger they, got, they got a lot of defensive weaknesses, but hey, good luck. Like, like those guys are going to have to guard Giannis. Do you remember um, when Detroit played – Detroit three years ago played the Milwaukee Bucks. Go watch those highlights of what Giannis was doing to Blake Griffin. That was three years ago. I don't know. Maybe you know something I don't know. Maybe he was trucking for three years. No, I got I got Philadelphia giving them problems if Embiid is healthy. 
you know, because yeah. they they defend and Doc's got them playing at a high level. And, you know, looking at Ben Simmons, he can guard pretty much anybody. I mean, he easily could be defensive player of the year. They could put him on anybody on the floor. Um, if it beats healthy, I mean, he's a problem. Just like Jokic is a problem in Denver. There's sure. no one that really can match up with those guys. Yeah, and don't sleep on Milwaukee. Like, like Drew Holiday is not Eric Bledsoe. Like, Eric Bledsoe, like you can't – he's a good player. He's a great regular season player. You just can't count on him in huge playoff games where you need him to make shots. And you can't count on Drew Holiday. So, I like Milwaukee too. I like the adjustments they've made on their offense. So, Milwaukee is like the most under-the-radar team in the NBA right now. No one's talking about them because they've fanned out the last two years. But exactly. they're going to be dangerous. Well, that's going to be quite a series, Bucks and uh, Celtics. Revisit the 80s, and, and uh, that's going to be a nah, down. That will not be a good series. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, before we let we go, I know, Marks, uh, you've played on a lot of great teams and a lot of great players. You mentioned, you know, Jason Kidd and Derrick Rose, but I just want you to talk about the 2008 World Champions. So that banner you have behind you, because I remember watching those games and playing against the Lakers. Remember me growing up in the eighties, you know, with the big three, those, that, that Get to team, the question. No, I'm just, it was exciting. I'm a fan. Uh, come it was, on. it was come great. On. And I just want to know like, what was Scal's experience like playing, like you mentioned some of the guys, yeah. how great that, was that? That team was nuts, man. It was like day in and day out. They were the most competitive group I've ever been around from the card games to the free throw shooting, to the weight room, to the, Somehow we get out the boxing gloves and we start throwing down to arm wrestling to, I mean, the <laughs> mute, it was the most competitive group. If you weren't on point every single day, you would hear about it for weeks. If you messed up a play, you would hear about it for weeks. If you, uh, if you wear the wrong outfit, you would hear about it for weeks. So it was just one of those things where everyone had to level up and it equal to us winning a championship. It was like, it was like a hostile environment in a good way. Stacey knows about that. We all saw the, lo the last dance, man. We saw, we saw that. You know about that. <laughs> exactly how it was. <laughs> so, so, you so had, if you didn't level up, man, you just get, yeah. you get ran over, you get steam ran rolled. Over. <laughs> so, so you'd be gone. So Scales, a, fe uh, a fellow redhead growing up as uh, then being the last pick because you had red hair, did that make you a tougher player? Yeah, a hundred percent. I tell people that all the time. Like, uh, like when people wonder why I'm not a nice person, I go, it's society. Yeah, like, people have been making fun of me for years, for years now. Like, how do you think I'm going to turn out? Like, you think I'm just going to like sit there and take it? No, <laughs> man. Like I'm on fight or flight, like every single second of the day. So <laughs> yeah. See, I'm talking about no one else understands that. And the king uh, picking on me uh, for over 30 oh years. Oh my God. There we go. That's my fault. Yeah, that's yeah, my fault. Right. He he's still the last one to get picked and pick up games. <laughs> <laughs> <old -ass man. laughs> I, I will say this. If you're a redhead and you're like 25 or above and you're not living in your mom's basement, then you really won life. Like you've really done well. <laughs> yeah. Or meatloaf, mom. Hey, we're new brothers, man. Hey, I, mom, I did I you get that. those pop tarts? <laughs> you've done well. Yeah, like, there's, there's like, there's really just a, it's not like a, like a sliding scale. There's just a line, like basement, no yeah. basement. Like if you're out of the basement, you've won. Like you've won life. That's it. That's how it works. <laughs> I hear you. <laughs> Thanks, Sam. That helped me out a lot. That make you feel better. Oh, yeah, I felt like it just that was, that was a little that therapy, was a therapy right there for you. Oh man, that was. I didn't know. I didn't know you felt that way about me. Jesus. Yeah, well, I feel bad. It's been a lot of pain. I'm oh, sorry, pain. man. Oh, you want a hug? <laughs> yeah, it's hey, that's a man code. Man code, man code <laughs> violation. <laughs> You can tell it's late in the show because yeah. the Stella Artois has been flowing. So Timmy's got needs a little bit of therapy. And that's that's usually a clue when Timmy asks a question, it's time to bring the interview to a close. <laughs> Brian Scalabrini, thank you so much for joining us. It was really great catching up. The Bulls fans, you're still one of the most popular guys during your time here in Chicago. Best of luck with your broadcasting career in Boston. And good luck with the big three starting up again this summer. You got it, guys. Thank you. Thanks for thank being you. on, Scal. You're the best, bro. Thanks. Okay, Tim. <laughs> Sriracha. Well, these musical
interludes only last for a couple of seconds, but in reality, the break between segments is a little bit longer. If you could only have heard what went on between segments, <laughs> we might be thrown off the airwaves. Yeah, even FCC, this is, uh, yeah. Yeah. I don't know if the FCC gets involved with podcasts, but that's a whole different issue. One thing we do know for sure, a popular new segment on the show is the man code violation. Man code Violation. Very nicely there done, you go. John. John. Hit the right button. Way to memorize the button. <laughs> and Stacy, I know that uh, a week doesn't go by where something doesn't happen that just uh, turns your head the other way. You know, <laughs> I try to avoid the man code violation. Seriously, I, I, I'm not one of these guys that look for it. Right. It just finds me. Well, okay? we're glad to hear that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Mark, it finds me, buddy. Okay. okay. Yeah. All right, so. Uh, another man code a couple couple of violations. Okay, um, I can't tell you the hell club that I work out of because I don't want to put them on blast. <sighs> but anyway, so this is a co-ed swimming pool, co-ed uh, nice. hot tub. Sounds nice. Yeah, it's a real nice health club. Real nice health club. Okay, and it's you know it, it's really nice. You go in there, it's really nice. So you gotta so everybody can use this. Um, Sauna. It's right next to the pool. Okay. Okay. There's a big sign that even Stevie Wonder could read. <laughs> Please take a shower after you come out of the sauna. Big sign. Okay. Don't enter the pool after coming out of the sauna. Huge sign. Huge sign. It's everywhere. It's everywhere. Yeah. It's in every club. It should be in every yeah, club. It's, it's it's nationwide. Yeah. It should be in your house. I don't okay? think it's in our club, but that's okay. It's yeah. Like, yeah. Your club's dingy and nasty. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, you got duty in the pool. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. 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 That's a different story, different yeah. chapter, okay. and a different episode. Okay. Yeah. So. <clears throat> So I'm in this, I'm swimming laps in the pool. You know, it's a, it's a lap pool. I'm swimming laps. You know, I'm in there. It's like about, probably about 4.30 in the morning. I'm in there on my Rocky Balboa workout. 4.30? Yeah, 4.30 in the morning. I'm, I'm, Cause you gotta get in there before the crowd gets in there. Okay, you gotta get in there early. He okay? ran there, of course. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's Timmy no, Whispers again. He, no, he skateboarded. <laughs> no, no, you skateboard over there. So anyway, before I was really interrupted by Kling and Clang, um, I'm swimming laps. Minding my own business. I'm the only one in the pool. It's just awesome. I'm swimming laps. So I'm like Mark Spitz. You know, I'm like, you know, Phelps, whatever his name, Michael Phelps. Michael Phelps, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. He I'm, only I'm, won 100 yeah, gold medals. Yeah, yeah I know. But right. you know what? In, in my mind, I won a gold medal, okay? <laughs> yeah. Don't don't ruin the dream, Mark Schnowski. All right, all right. So anyway, I was really interrupted by Mark Schnowski. He's trying to help. So I'm swimming. Now, I can see from the pool, I can see the sauna. I can see the people in the sauna. I can actually watch them. While you're swimming. Yeah, because the pool's right next to the sauna, Okay. So, there was a guy in the sauna, kind of a, <laughs> kind of a, kind of a portly gentleman, big, big guy, big guy, you know, he had some goggles on, on the top of his forehead. So that gave me a tip that he was going to try to get in the pool. That gave me the tip. After the sauna. After the sauna. And he had, you know, he had a pair of Speedos on. He was a heavy set guy, hairy back, just a hairy, like, oh. You God. really getting a good look. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Because I need to know if he's going to jump in the pool. Okay, that's what I need to know. Oh, is that is that it? No, reason? I'm no, no, I'm just telling you because I, I I'm I'm a clean freak. I, if you go if you're gonna sweat for 30 minutes in a hot tub, I mean right. in a, in a sauna, right, and jump yourself in a pool without showering off, I need to know. So you're saying Pat Ewing couldn't be a member of the no, club? No, 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 Pat Ewing couldn't be. No, no, no. Along came Polly. So, so, so like, yeah, exactly. He, he looked like that guy in Along Came Polly when Ben Stiller went, you know, bumped into him, anyway. shirt and skin. <laughs> it was oh, like, Oh, you know that one? That's what it was like. Wait, so, he's in a different lane, though. No, wait a minute. Let me finish the story. <laughs> so I'm swimming. Doo, doo, doo. I get down to the one end, and he's coming out the coming out the uh, the, high, um, the sauna. So I'm like, no, no. Dun, he's dun, walking towards dun, dun, lane two. Dun, dun. And I'm like, no, he's not. Tell me this is not true. Because there's a hot tub. So I thought he was going to go in a hot tub, which is also nasty. So he bypassed the hot tub. I'm like, Damn. He's getting ready to get in this water. So I had to swim all the way back to the other end because there's like a ladder over there. So I need to get up on the ladder to get out. So I'm swimming. I'm trying to get out of the water. I'm hurrying. I'm hustling. So I don't get in. So I don't be in the water like when he's shark. in the water. Yeah. I don't want to be in the water when this guy jumps in. Okay. okay? So I'm in lane one. He's in lane two. He's going to get in lane two. So he's over there stretching. He's doing all these like, you know, body stretches, you know. And I'm like, oh, my God. He's going to jump in. 
So as I'm getting ready, I get to the edge. And you know how you get to the edge and you, you know how they do those little flip turns? But yeah. I wasn't going to do a flip turn. Wait, wait, wait. I was just going to get out. Wait, board shorts or a Speedo? Okay, anyway, I'm not talking to you. You ruined, you ruined the story. <laughs> so so here comes this dude. He jumps in the water Ooh. before I get to the edge. Ooh. So my, my first thought is like, oh, all this contamination just went off this dude. And he's like, you remember how Godzilla or Kong, when they walk in the ocean, and they're, they're standing up half their bodies in the ocean, and they're walking. That's how he was. He was walking the lanes. He was walking the lanes. He wasn't swimming. He was walking the lanes with goggles on his head. And he's just, he looked like King Kong going through, like, the Pacific, just walking, <laughs> trying to get back to Skull Island. That's what it looked like. Pacific Rim. And I, and, and I get out. I hustle out. I hustle out of the water. I, I literally, like, slid on the ground like a seal to get out. And then I sit up, and I sit up, and I'm looking, I'm looking at this dude. I'm like... You got to be freaking kidding me. Now, you don't say anything? or just... No, I went and reported him. Oh. Why are you one of those guys? Oh, yeah, I snitched. I no. snitched. Is it a, did you tell him it's a man code Yeah, violation. I told him it's a man code violation. <laughs> I told him it's disgusting. I pay, I pay a lot of money for this club. And I said, for people, there's a big sign that says, please don't get in the water unless you take a shower. Okay? He violated that. Okay? That was just one violation. Wow. The next, the next, like three days later, there's another violation. Same guy. No, no, it was a lady. This is a woman code violation. Harry back. Yeah, no, she didn't have a Harry back. No, she didn't have a Harry back. So she code had one of. She's in violation. the same situation. Same situation, like four thirty in the morning. Same situation. She's in the. She's in the sauna by herself. She's got one of those flower caps that you used to see in the sixties. Yeah, yeah, like one of those swim caps. Yeah, yeah. So I'm like, oh my god, that tipped me off. She's going to be in the water. <laughs> so I'm like, oh my god. So you gotta get there earlier. Yeah, so I'm swimming. It means there's a lot of I'm, hair elsewhere. I'm swimming. There's Tim right oh, yeah. there. Okay, there we go. Yeah, yeah, I just, said it. We just lost yeah, another sponsor. Yeah, wow, man, I'm glad I'm yeah. done eating. So, 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 so I'm swimming. Do 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 do. I get same scenario. Get to the other end. She's coming out the same time I get to the far end. I'm like, oh. So I got to sprint. So I, I push off off the edge and I'm swimming like a torpedo trying to get to the other end. Before I get to the edge, she cannonballs in her oh. sweaty oh. body. Oh. She knew. Cannonball. She, she cannonballed. Yes, yeah, she cannonballed in. She was probably about 125 pounds. Little, little lady, but she was sweaty. She had been in the sauna for 30 minutes, oh. and she cannonballed in the water. That's hot. So did you tell That's her? That's hot. <laughs> <laughs> You're a sick dude, man. You're a sick dude. You're a sick dude, man. You're a pervert, dude. You're sick. Did you tell on her? To, I you... sure did. I went back. I was Karen, as they call these Karens now. I was. I, I wasn't Karen. I was. I was. At, what would you call a man? Uh, Carl? I was Carl. I went and told. I sure did go tell. She'd have told on me if I'd have jumped in with wow. a sweaty body. Every man for himself. No, now. listen, listen, right, woman. Hey, listen. If you commit a crime around me, I'm telling. I'm not doing time for you, John. Okay, you do something, I'm snitching. So I have to self-report then because oh. I go from the pool. Let me just make sure this okay. one. I go I in the pool. Okay. Then I go into the hot tub. Okay. And then I go to the sauna. Is okay. that okay to do? If, yeah. If you were. You're ending in the sauna. But how do you finish the lap? I, I, well, I, I jump out of the pool. I don't use the stairs, but, um, <laughs> <laughs> but I just want to make sure that's okay. So if I come yeah. to your club and I go pool, hot tub, sauna, that's, that's okay. And Stay, no, 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 no. You can't get into his no, club. No, no, It's no. locked. Yeah, it's locked. <laughs> yeah. You, if you go from the pool to the hot tub to the sauna, you're fine. Okay. But if you try to go pool, sauna, back to the hot tub, I'm reporting you. <laughs> I'm just going to be honest. Okay. Because you're sweating like a pig, and then you're going to jump back in the water after sweating. Can I can I ask you another man code violation yeah. that occurred today at my club? Okay. I'm not going to name any There's names, been a but... lot of man code, man code, code violations <laughs> at your club. Well, I don't have the leather seats that you do in the hole. But there was a, there was a gentleman in the – so we have a uh, sauna, a steam room in the men's – Yes, so do we. And so, you know, occasionally I'll go in there and after, you know, before I take a shower and there was a guy full naked laying down on the bench, right where you open the door, looked like he was posing for Michelangelo, <laughs> spread eagle. <laughs> what, what, what now? What? Were you the only one in there? 
I didn't even go in. Oh, you turned <laughs> around and left. I said, "That's a good call." Uh, yeah, I didn't turn even turn around. I didn't even open the door. But I'm, I'm just, I don't understand, Tim. What possesses people to go? Why straight? asking Tim? <laughs> <laughs> That's the wrong guy to ask. That is the wrong guy to ask. I'll just say, Jabba the Hutt even wore a towel. <laughs> <laughs> Star Wars reference. Gotta love that. That is a man co violation. Oh, I, well, I hope it is. Yeah, it's something. I, I mean, if you're just laying there and you're like like you're sunbathing and naked, that's that's a manco violation. <laughs> you got to have a towel on just because be was he on a towel? Though. He was on a towel, but that the, everything else was like, fully exposed. Like okay, see, well, you know, that's kind of half and half. What? See, oh what, no, what? no. What I would think wow. was what I think would be a manco violation if he was sitting with his bare ass on the tile of the. Of the of the steam room, so you're like, okay there's no with towel. Him. So you're okay with him being spread eagle? No, because I, I definitely wouldn't go in there if there's a guy doing that. No, I, I, it is a man code violation. What if you can't yeah. see him till after the steam stops? Well, that's the problem. <laughs> see, like 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 I've seen guys. I've been in the steam room, and I'm sure people that are listening to this have done the same thing. You're in the steam room, and it's so steamy in there you can't see anybody. Okay, yeah, and, it, and, and then all of a sudden it oh, stops, hey, and then all of a sudden you say you, you see the guy over there, like three people over there, butt naked. Hey, Bill, what are you doing? Hey, uh, can you give me a little water? And you're like, oh my god, I gotta get out. <laughs> gotta get out. <laughs> Man, co <laughs> violations. <laughs> wow, Tim, you got anything, or should we, or should we go rapid fire? We gotta go rapid fire. Let's go rapid so. fire, John. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, we are recording this podcast for your enjoyment on, on all the podcast forums and on YouTube during the Elite Eight of the NCAA tournament. It is a Tuesday evening, and Gonzaga is blowing out USC. It's 83-64, about surprise. to go final. No surprise, Gonzaga going for the first undefeated season since Bobby Knight's Indiana Hoosiers way back in 1976 with Kent Benson and that group. So, Stacy, uh, I know your, your Sooners uh, bowed out relatively early. Who, who you got in this now? First of all, I didn't go to Oklahoma. <laughs> you mentioned that last I week. I know. I'm saying it again. I'm Gonzaga. <laughs> we're going to the Final Four right now. Oh, he's okay, my, Go Zags. We're going to the Final Four right now, okay? Yeah, they're celebrating right now. Yes, we're celebrating. I'm celebrating with them. The final. <laughs> Way to go, Zags. We're number one, baby. Are you, you going to start dancing? <laughs> no, I'm not dancing. I'm okay. not Chuck Swirsky. <laughs> anyway, um, look at it. Look at it. We're all look, We're so excited. This is our first trip or our second trip. I don't know. Okay, it's our second trip. Second, second trip. So Baylor plays... SC, Baylor plays Baylor plays Houston. Houston, Houston in, okay. in one of the semifinals. UCLA plays Michigan. And Gonzaga is going to get the winner of Michigan UCLA. Oh. And John, John's not the only guy who can bring props. Oh. I got my oh. Michigan basketball. Oh. Let's see his props. Nicely yeah. played. Nicely there you played. Go. Nicely played. My son yeah. Eric, a proud graduate of the University of Michigan, so he'll be rooting with all his buddies. They're gathered at a Michigan bar somewhere in Chicagoland, watching Michigan UCLA, which what? is going to tip off in just a few minutes. But Stace, obviously, you play for the national title. Yes, and that was a whole different thing now with full full crowds and all the excitement of March Madness. Now, you have limited seating at all these different venues in the Indianapolis area. It's you know the kids are going to relish winning a title, whoever is able to cut down the nets. But from your experience, it it had to be almost larger than life the NCAA tournament and all the hoopla surrounding it. I mean, growing up as a little kid watching the Final Fours on television, you know, seeing teams like. North Carolina, Georgetown, Houston, UCLA. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that was a dream of mine to get to the Final Four. You know, it was always in big venues, you know, the King Dome, the Superdome. And you see, like, you know, 40,000 people. And I always thought it would be really cool to play in that kind of environment, yeah. you know. And uh, so when my team got to the Final Four, I got kind of shafted. Uh, we had one of the, you know, one of the best teams in college basketball that year. We finished 36-4. and four. Um, and so our final, our final four game, the national championship game was in Kansas city. So it's almost a home game. And, and, yeah. that, and Kansas city's, we were just there weeks before yeah. because that's our conference tournament. Right. So it didn't feel like a national championship game to me. You know, it just felt like, you know, just a conference championship, but you know, of course, and then we're playing Kansas in the final. So it definitely felt like a big eight championship game. And, um, you know, to, to get that far and, uh, to lose, uh, Man, Mark, you just know how to bring up bad. How memories. many times did you guys play Kansas during the season? Uh, three times. We, I think we beat them three times. Oh, man. wow. Yeah, that's, that's, tough. that's that makes it you worse. You beat them yeah. three times during the season. Yeah. And you lost to them. Yeah, we lost to them. Wow. And you know what? I mean, at the end of the man. day, at the end of the day, it's tough to beat a team three times. Sure. You know. Um. But you know, they played a they played a great game. They had guys in order to to win to be at that level to win the championship. Uh, you need others to step up. When, you know, you know your star players are going to show up. 
you know, but you need other guys. See, Danny Manning always had great games against us, but we shut down everybody else. No one else scored on us. But in that particular game, they had a walk on on the football team. They had ten points. They had, they, I mean, they had guys. Really? Yeah. They had guys that weren't even on the scouting report. Kill us, and that really hurt us because we did not you know, figured that they would be that big of an impact. And that's what makes, you know, college basketball so good because, you know, the best team doesn't always win. It's a one game and you're out, you know. Well, our guy Kendall Gill had the same experience the next year. They went to the, They went to the Final Four. They beat Michigan twice during the regular season, beat them pretty easily. And then, you know, they, they had some great players on that team, but, you know, uh, there, there was, I know Kendall told me, I think it was Terry Mills that had a shot late and it was like, he didn't hit anything the whole year against yeah. us. But that's that's the thing about the one yeah. and done is why people really love the tournament because you see sometimes these crazy upsets, Oral Roberts beat Ohio State, almost got to the elite. Well, I, I will say this, the, the, you know, having COVID has really kind of, you know, turned everything upside down. Just like in the NBA, the bubble, you had certain teams that played well in the bubble, um, that were better than the teams that were in. If you played a, a regular playoff series, I don't see Milwaukee losing to Miami in a, yeah, in a, in yeah. a seven game series. I don't see that. And it's the same thing here in the bubble. You're seeing teams that are, you know, that are not even supposed to be there. You know, teams that would probably lose in the first round, you know, and not even get to the second weekend. Uh, Oral Roberts, you know, UCLA, who's a, you know, 11 seed, you know, if, if things were normal, you may not see those teams. It's made it interesting. You know, I didn't even do a, a pool this year. This is the first time I didn't do a bracket. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, because it was just so unpredictable because of COVID, you don't know if a team you know, like Oregon, you know, or, or it was somebody got that, you know, in the conference tournament, they had to, I know Kansas got pulled out. Duke got pulled out in their conference. tournament. So I figured, well, if that's going to happen in the conference tournament, it's going to happen in the NCAA tournament. And I think you saw VCU, I think. The VCU, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, it was really hard to pick, pick uh, you know, do brackets this year because of that. Just bet Gonzaga on the money line. You'll be doing pretty well. John, how about hit, hit the rifles one more time for us. The Major League Baseball season starts on Thursday, opening day, and, and the Cubs were involved in talks to try to extend contracts to some of their core players, Anthony Rizzo, Javier Baez, Chris Bryant, and as we're taping right now on Tuesday evening, none of them had gotten done, and, and they, low, they lowballed Anthony Rizzo. They offered him uh, five years, $70 million, which is a lot of money for anybody, but when you compare it to other players of his caliber in Major League Baseball and all he's done for the city of Chicago with his work at Lurie Children's Hospital and everything else, wow, they lowballed him, and I was really surprised at that. Well, I tell you what, I mean, there's going to be a lot of teams out there that, that will go out there and, and that will want him, you know, that will mm -hmm. offer him the money that he wants. And, you know, you're not going to get the hometown discount. You're just not. No, not anymore. These kids, these kids came up from the minor leagues. They paid their dues. They won a World Series. Um, you know, they're star players in the city. They do a lot for the community. They want to get paid, you know, and it's going to be tough to tell these guys to say, hey, look, uh, you give me the home team, the home team yeah, discount. It's not yeah. going to work. It, that, that those that's not working anymore. And we wouldn't be shocked to see Chris Bryant traded before the deadline coming up this His summer. His name comes up more than yeah, any. It just of seems them. like they're not going to yeah, invest money. Yeah, in they don't want to invest money in no. him. And, and to me, I think it's a shame because he's such a versatile guy. I mean, you can pretty much play him anywhere. I mean, he's a natural third baseman, but they play him in the outfield sometimes. So it's like, you know, when you get that type of versatility, I know he hasn't he hasn't hit the ball like he normally hits the ball, but he's still a threat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I got news for you guys. They're going to be trading. They're going to be big time. Sellers. Sellers, absolutely. Mm -hmm. It's yeah, it all does, setting it, up that way. It doesn't way. seem like the Ricketts family wants to reinvest. They want to cut their losses from sure. all the things that happened during yeah. the pandemic. And and Southside Susie, I guess, has a story about uh, the White Sox and, and her dad and her displeasure with well, uh, Tony La Russa over time. I'll set it up. We were watching the game, and La Russa is spring training, meaningless, and he comes out to make a pitching change. They're up 6-2. And I thought of Southside and what she used to talk about her dad. And yeah, well, Stacey's know, got his socks cap on. So Stacey does Susie. and I disagree. Um, I think he's old. <laughs> and I told he's you in our production yeah, meeting. Old. He's old. <laughs> I told you in our production <laughs> meeting, just because there's snow on the mountaintop doesn't mean there's not a fire in the furnace. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, <laughs> I think, you know, if there's one thing that's clear by his age, he's on a short leash. So... And just because you're old, Susan, We've got that going. doesn't mean you're, you're cold. cold. Oh, okay. All right. 
Sriracha. No, I, we, he's just, he has a long history. Of, uh, I have a long history of P- PTSD with him and some of the crazy calls he made when he used to, my father, he used to just make my dad nuts. And when we were, you know, watching that game and he changed the pitcher in the ninth, I could just hear my dad from the grave going, God damn it! <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, oh, it's going to be a long season. Yeah, that's why those games sometimes drag on fast four hours, oh. all those pitching changes. and Leave Tony alone. You know, I'm, right. not, I'm not saying right. Tony alone. I'm okay. not saying Tony's old, but they asked him about the Eloy Jimenez injury, and he goes, what team is he on? Oh. No, he didn't. No, no. I'm just oh, I'm right. Just, wow. just, so that's how, shoot the, the rifles. That's how rumors get yeah. started right there. Yeah. And oh. now he's coming after Chanel. Yeah. 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 yeah, line up the door. Line the right. door's locked. Yeah. You can't get in. Hey, Tony LaRusso will punch you. can't get in at the Nautilus Don't Medical sleep. Group. Yeah. Tony LaRusso will punch you, Mark. Well, Stacey, maybe we can, um, punch. in Tony's honor, can we flatten the rim of our hat? Oh, yeah. I can't do it. All right. That's the suit now. So the White Sox starting the season with high expectations. As we mentioned, it all starts on Thursday. We'll have a lot of fun talking baseball throughout the spring and summer. Coming up next, we take it on the down low, the special treat. Keep it tuned. And give me the hot sauce. The down low. I like to go down low. Uh, that wasn't me. <laughs> that, was, that was whispers. That was whispers. <laughs> oh, my God. Hey, before we wrap up the show, we want to try something a little bit different here on episode 22 of Give Me the Hot Sauce. First of all, once again, we want to thank our great sponsors at Bubble Up, and we're going to try something a little bit different. We're going to bring in one of our most loyal listeners. Johnny likes to call him Big Red from Little Shoot. (laughs) This is a uh, Rick Bruck who's worked in the industry for a long time. Matter of fact, as we speak, he's setting up for uh, the Milwaukee Brewers home opener at what used to be called Miller Park, now American Family Park. And so, right. Rick, uh, we appreciate you listening. Uh, what, do you, what do you like best? Do you like the man code violation? Do you like the stinger? I mean, what, what, do, you, what do you like to hear? You guys kill me. I hope you're good friends because the way you go at each other. <laughs> I, was listening, I was listening in my car the other day, driving down, listening to uh, 21, and I'm telling you, I had soda. I blew it out of my nose. I was laughing so hard. <laughs> it was so awesome. You guys are so good together. You know how they yeah. say that you can't give yourself a nickname? Well, your your longtime buddy John Walsh did that. You were talking about his little uh, uh, little growth underneath his lip. It looked like dirt. Yeah, and, and he decided <laughs> hey, he labeled himself he the, knows. the stinger. He, he's the stinger now, and I think it's going to stick probably for the rest of his life. Yes, what do you is. think of that? Yeah, good, uh, good, good for John. <laughs> <laughs> That's usually our reaction to a lot of the stuff he comes up with. <laughs> You know, the one thing that that I really, really like about the show is you guys bring up some really interesting topics, but the one is like that astronaut diaper thing. (laughs) (laughs) We're trying to get him on. I'm telling you guys. Wait a minute. Okay. (laughs) Next time, I really would like to know where you guys get those because... I'm 65. I'm older, and I've got some problems. You know what I mean? Yeah, <laughs> Rick. There's nothing wrong with that, man. You, <laughs> hey, that's the first sign right there of, of admitting you have a problem. We're okay. wearing it now. Hey, John, so has a pair on now. They're thong yeah. versions. <laughs> no, that's just that's just a stinger. Man, thong code version. violation. Stinger. Oh, that's, that's a big one, thong man. diapers. Yeah. Hey, Rick, you're joining the show, which is traditionally called on the down low. Since uh, you've had a chance to work with uh, Stinger over the years, you got a great on the down low story about uh, maybe John losing his cool or, or something, <laughs> beating something somebody during, up during a live <laughs> broadcast, choking somebody. Yeah, I mean, feel free to you know to go any direction you want with this. You know, I, I've known John for a while. We were in New York together a few years back. We had a friend of ours, a usual friend of ours, get married. And, you know, we were having some adult beverages, having a really, really good time. And all of a sudden, from behind me, this man grabs me around my neck and starts dragging me around the place. And I'm like, who is this guy? It's my good friend, John Walsh. And we call that, what do we call that, John? <laughs> we call that the Ranger Chokehold. <laughs> That's the Ranger Chokehold, man. Tim, that was your favorite move, wasn't it, in your MMA days? Oh, yeah, I love the rear naked chokes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and he likes it more when you're naked, freak. That's literally what it's called. <laughs> I forgot that part, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. No. yeah. 
Hey, you got well, a- that's a good story about John. We've been friends for years. He's a great guy. Yeah, he is. You got a question for Stacy or, or anybody else with the show? Susie, well, you know, Stacy, I'm telling you, man, I, I love all the years of nicknames that you've come up with, guys. I really, really love that about how you just pop a guy's, he scores, he does something great, and you come up with a term or, or anything for him. You know, the stuff that you had for Jimmy Butler, you know, the, the stuff that you had for a lot of those old uh, uh, Bulls players. That's the only reason why I would listen to it, because I would listen to you kill those guys. How, where do you come up with this stuff? You know what, Rick? It's it's a gift. <laughs> <laughs> it's man, in the show, it's a gift, Rick. You know, I can't even explain, man. Some people are blessed with with uh, abilities, and uh, I was one of those people. And it's not you just pro, pro pro players. It's uh, it goes way deeper than that. Yeah, it goes way right. deeper than Rick. What he's trying to say is, I've been giving people nicknames since the turn of time in our health club pickup games. Uh, you know, I give everybody a nickname. Oh, so the, the bagger at the grocery store, he's got a nickname for him. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a great show, man. I listen to it. I can't help but laugh. I know that that you guys are having a great time doing it. And the guests that you've had on, the BJ Armstrong uh, episode was great. The Grant Brothers was a killer episode. Uh, the guy that came in and did all the voices, the Scottish guy. Man, I was man, in. I Al Foran. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man, you guys do such a great job. So thanks for letting me come on and just tell you what I think. It, it, it's really a great show. And you I hope what? you take it the next step, you know? You know what? You're a friend of the program. You're, you're more than welcome to come on. I mean, John gave us a little uh, insight about you before you came on. He said, you know, you, you're cross between Santa Claus and, and Colonel Sanders. <laughs> and so no. I didn't believe him. I didn't believe him, Rick. Rick, I didn't believe him. And the then magic. I see you. The magic. I, yeah. I see you, Rick. Rick, you do got a little Colonel Sanders going on do you, do you on Zoom. Nickname? Do you have a nickname for him, Stacy? No, I don't have a nickname for Rick. I'm just saying with this, the stinger. <laughs> he wants said, a bucket of chicken. That's what he wants. Yeah. yeah, I want some free chicken. Uh, but Stinger said, he said, hey, you know, you know, Rick's my boy. I've been knowing him for years. He's going to look right. like, you know, Santa Claus and, and, and Colonel Sanders. Half and half a mix. Uh, Gordon yeah, Fisher. Yeah. And and Gordon yeah. Fishman, <laughs> terrible. <laughs> no, hey, don't listen to Tim Whitmer. I can't Whitmer. go salty seamen, okay? <laughs> oh, we just lost another sponsor. <laughs> Thanks to Timmy Whitmer. <laughs> salty seamen. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Uh, I think Rick's all set wow. in the department with Big wow. Red from Little Shoot. So, yeah. Big Red, yeah. thanks for joining us. Thanks for putting up with uh, the singer all these years. And, uh, Keep listening to Give Me the Hot Sauce. We appreciate it. Right on. Hey, we'll send you a gift. Guys. We'll send you a yeah, gift. Yeah, we'll send you a little something to remember. I don't know what it by. is. We don't have a lot, but <laughs> we're going to send it to you. Hey, hey, before we get out of here and wrap up episode 22, John's got one more story to tell, and this is a doozy. We're going to put this on the bubble up roll so you can see some of the background on the Love 22 guy. Oh, my oh, God. Yeah, once I'm going to have to step out. You guys. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm very uncomfortable here, right now. <laughs> I'm going to leave. Unfortunately, you guys didn't grow up in the ocean state like I did. Oh, and it's surrounded by beaches. So you spent a lot of time. <laughs> now you're in Wisconsin. What's surrounded that by molesters. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, I mean, Land of Ed Gein. Yeah, well. So hey, little boy, when I was uh, a young, Do you young like clowns? when you were a young kid, you, you make some pressures. <laughs> the big clams and this guy clams. Would, would be walking the beaches like Uncle Sam. Yeah. He was dressed as Uncle Sam. Yes, yes. Okay. In the full uniform? Yeah, you, there's a photo of him in yeah, much in the, the bubble, bubble up role, and, yeah. and Key West. That's much later weird. in life. But he would that's the wanted poster. That's not really he was, he, that's a wanted poster. <laughs> he would write on the sand and just down the beach. And he'd write love 22 and he'd give out $22 oh. bills. And I know we're on episode 22. And I always think about that for some you reason. You think about him all the time. <laughs> don't you? Was that, was that traumatic? Just, yeah. He always thinks it's about it. I always think about just, it. Hey, the guy spent his whole life doing that. He traveled the world. It says. He obviously made a big impression on you. <laughs> he's, he's still blocking oh out that he was, he was 26. Oh my God. Oh my God. Yeah. I'm yeah, just going to say. I'm just going to say. You know, well, Sam wants you. I just, I just want to say, ladies and gentlemen, America, as you listen to this story, I know you're about as creeped out as I am hearing this story about some man going around giving kids uh, handshakes and little cards. And he wasn't love, handshaking. Love he was writing love twenty two. Hey, but we never, I, as a little kid, I didn't 22. know what that meant. I, what does that mean? I don't know. That was, his, and you still don't know. No, he. You know what? I found out. I read the story. He went, he went to URI and his, uh, the frat he lived on was 22 something road. So it, that 22 always sort of 
stayed with him for the rest of his life. And that's what he became, the Love 22 guy. Yeah. Well, sometimes you put the pieces together. That's how the tub in the basement started. <laughs> <laughs> is, uh, is Mr. Love 22 still with us? No, he died. He passed, I think. Uh, he was in a home in Westerly. He was like 80 something years old. That article came out when he was like, like, but I just like the fact that the guy just lived the life on his own terms and traveled the world and, you know, had some fun with it. And, you know, yeah, Hey, yeah. yeah. So if you want to read more about Mr. Love 22, there's not much, there's not much we'll, we'll post the link yeah. on the bubble up roll. And Listen, if you do want to read if, more about hey, it, we, we suggest you seek professional if, help. Hey, if anybody, if anybody, <laughs> if anybody comes out of the woodwork and, and wants to uh, tell a story about this, uh, you're more than welcome. We're, we're willing to help and listen. Or self-report. Yeah, self-report. Because John obviously, King's good at that. <laughs> John, John obviously needs to report something. That's why we're having this therapeutic message about Love 21. And Intervention next week. Yeah. <laughs> I'm hitting the music. Yeah. Up, I still can't believe he's talking about I always think creepy. about Creepy. Uncle Sam wants you. I always think about him. I want to thank my all of our shower. viewers on YouTube. You can watch all the fun every week on Give Me the Hot Sauce. This was episode 22 in honor of Mr. Love, Love 22. 22. Thank you so much for listening and viewing. We'll be back with a brand new show, and who knows what kind of stories we'll have next week. Stacy, take us out of here. Drive home safely. Love 22. <laughs> <laughs>